Knowing how to scan is a ability of the Holy Spirit. The scanning, the word scanning means to like monitor, to look into something, to evaluate something, investigate something. But the Holy Spirit will train you and overtake you while you're meditating to scan things. Before you go somewhere, you have to know how to scan where you're going because shootings happen. You're not supposed to live in fear and be paranoid. You're supposed to be confident and at peace wherever you go. The Bible said that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So the Lord is ordering his steps and showing him where to go, where not to go. But there is a scanning ability that you can be intentional about before you go to a place to scan it out. And how you do that practically is this. Say you are going to Dollar General. Before you go to Dollar General, you don't plan to go to Dollar General. Scan out Dollar, Dollar General, that specific store that you're going to. You know how it looks. Your imagination could see how it looks. So in that moment, you remember the store. You know the store. You remember co-workers that work at the store, owls and stuff. And in your mind, you're looking at the store. You see the cereal. You see the, the owl with the bleaches and things like that. But then as you're studying the store in specific at that location that you have planned to go, now you offer up your imagination to the Holy Spirit. And you ask him to show me what I can't see there. You ask him, do you want me to go there? Show me what I can't see there. Show me if there's anything that I'm missing concerning going there. When you do that, the Holy Spirit overtakes your scanning. Now, the visionary of the Holy Ghost, the, the reason why visions come is because the Holy Spirit is a visionary. So he gives visions because he is a visionary. So now your mind starts to see the Dollar General, not just from the imagination that you was walking in through your intentionality, your will, your decision, but now the Holy Spirit starts to send pictures to your mind. Now he's showing you if there is a shooter there. Now he's showing you if there is a bad chaos going to happen there. So that's what goes on with scanning. Scanning is a term that simply the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about because this is an ability that over the years, I've noticed within myself, it becomes more precise, just the same way shooting a basketball, the more you shoot it, it becomes precise. The same way, the more you drive, it can become more precise. When you first start driving, you might put your foot on the brake every minute, but then you become more precise in driving. Or well, the same thing with seeing what God wants you to see. Even when you ask God a question, even if he doesn't answer, it's still an answer. Because the quietness of God is still speaking something. It's a possibility that he doesn't have an answer for that question because the question didn't come from him. In some cases, not all cases, but this is the job of life, to find out the will of the Lord. You can't say, I am hearing this and this is what it means. God is not answering me because he doesn't have an answer for it. No, not every situation is the same. And that's why as a teacher, I tell you a lot of times that what I'm telling you, it doesn't apply because everybody has a specific demand on them. And even God will not 
answer a Seraphonician woman so that you could seek and pursue. Your eyes that work best are in your spirit. But you feed your heart the word and you meditate on things above. You set your mind on things above so that the eyes of your spirit that is already opened could start overtaking all level of other eyes that you have. You have the eyes of your emotions. That's why people say, but how I feel, and then they release their opinion. That's the eyes of their emotions. How I feel about it. You ever hear people do videos on that? My take on this, how I feel about this, is that thus and thus, and then they go on. So your eyes, you have eyes in your emotions. Then you have eyes in your mind. And so mostly with the imagination and your, your, your preconceived notions and the things that you ponder on and meditate on, that's the mind. Then you have the eyes of your will, what you see yourself doing. This is what makes people stubborn because they already saw themselves doing something. So Martha couldn't stop going up and down. She couldn't sit at Jesus' feet because she saw herself going different places. She saw herself serving at a synagogue. She saw herself serving a chief priest. So in her mind, she couldn't just be still because the eyes of her will saw herself doing something. And here's Jesus telling her, this is not what I want you to do. I, I want you to sit at my feet. But the eyes of her will is more important to her. So now you understand what Martha was operating in. It was the eyes of her will. She saw herself. And then all of these are connected because when the will has eyes and you see yourself doing something, then your emotional eyes connect. It collaborates. Are you seeing this? So it collaborates with the, the, the eyes of the will. The eyes of the emotions will connect with the eyes of the will. And now your emotions get attached to it. So if you don't see yourself doing something, you, I mean, you saw yourself doing something, but God telling you to do something else. Now you'll start feeling bad when you don't do it. So you ever met those people? I don't feel like I'm doing enough. I don't feel like I'm doing enough. In some cases, it's a person that their eyes or their will wants to be rebellious. But God is restraining them. And so now the eyes of their emotions are, are looking at the thing like in sorrow and from a sad perspective because they want to go and do it. So as you can see, there's no time to waste because there's, there's parts of you that you need to parent. Perversion is evidence that you didn't parent the different sections of yourself properly, purely. That's what it means. So if, if, if a person has perversion in their life, it means that you are not parenting the different aspects of your life properly. So where do you have time to waste? Nowhere. Where do you have time to scan uh, nonsense and of this world? Nowhere. You don't have time to drift. Nowhere. Because the, the, the one hour that you drift, you're leaving all these other departments of yourself undone, incomplete, unsupervised. And now you're letting it crash. And what becomes of you? You go from wisdom to wicked. You go from advancing in the spirit to now slave of the flesh. You go from light to darkness. You go from freedom to yokes. You go from joy to confusion. Peace to worry. The prophetic anointing 
The seer's anointing is the same. Is the same. I, I, I wish I wish people would really comprehend this. The seer's anointing, the prophetic anointing are not different. A prophet and a seer is not different. The Bible says that seer was the original name for prophet. Do you know what that means? A prophet is a seer. A seer is a prophet. They're not different. The difference between a seer and the difference between a prophet is that a seer can see. That's not a revelation. That's a complication. That means that you got to go back and receive a word from the Lord and a revelation from the Holy Spirit because that's not a revelation. I don't know how stupid that sounds. Let me, see, let me show you how stupid it sounds. The difference between a wife and a helper is that a helper helps. A wife. The difference between a wife and a helper. You see, you see how ludicrous You see that? The difference between a husband and a provider. Huh? The difference between a husband and the head of a house. The difference between a Christ and an anointed one. This. Let me explain this to you. Because a seer is the definition of the prophet and his function. He can see. That's what separates him. His ability to see. His ability to see. That's what separates him from other people that even call on the name of the Lord or are called by the Lord. A prophet will see. So let me give you an example. So say somebody is an evangelist. They're evangelizing. The prophet is a blessing to the evangelist because even though the evangelist is set to tell people about Jesus, the evangelist is opening people's eyes to a degree. So the evangelist has open eyes. But the prophet could tell the evangelist, do you know that your bus is going to encounter an accident? So don't drive on I-95. So the prophet could see at a more advanced plateau and God is always talking to the prophet about things concerning sight, warnings, visuality, audio. Because these are different ways that the Lord is speaking to the prophet all the time. Now the evangelist can see because the evangelist is opening up people's eyes to see that Jesus is the Savior. So the evangelist can see. But the prophet is a seer. This is their main operation. They could be eating a biscuit from church's chicken. Grease on the biscuits. Blood pressure going higher than a mug. <laughs> And I don't know where they just see. It. 
So a prophet and a seer is not two different things. But people will act like, you know, they have a revelation from God. And it is okay, man. I, I, it just matters how much you are willing to humble yourself before God for him to give you the, the pure, authentic wisdom and revelation of things. That's all it is. Um, I just want to say you blessed. <laughs> you you blessed because <laughs> because saints um, before I went to sleep I went to sleep at six a.m. man because I was I was spending a lot of time with the Holy Ghost and and He'd be showing me things and He'd be telling me things and the conversation gets so sweet that I forget time literally I forget I forget time and then. The Holy Spirit, while we talking, he'll tell me, go to sleep. You can go to sleep now. Do you know the Holy Spirit is so jealous of, of being with you? He, do you know that God can become obsessed with the man that he made in his image? The Bible is saying Enoch walked with God and was no more. That means God so obsessed with him, God like, now, come on. Come on, Enoch, let's just live in eternity now. You say, well, why doesn't God do that now? Because God places so much of a demand on that level of impartation he places in the man. And he wants that man to disperse it to people through teachings, through words, through words. The major transference of impartation is through words. They talk to the Holy Spirit so much about different things that the Holy Spirit talked to me about all type of things. But the greatest conversations I have with the Holy Spirit is about my personal life that's so I never get killed prematurely so that I never end up in a situation that I can't see I can see my block my village my city I can see because I'm still and I'm listening and I'm expecting and I am enjoying the quality time. The most powerful moments that you'll have with God is not even this. Those are not the greatest moments of prayer. The greatest moments of prayer is where you have come into the realm of stillness and you're quiet. That's where the power happens. Since the most powerful moments I've had in conferences, even in the physical, when I meet you all in the physical, the greatest intensity is when I get quiet. Because there are different things that quietness represents. It means that now you are no longer traveling through the fleshly route to try to achieve your own form of spirituality. There's a lot of things that you do because it makes you feel like a woman of God. It makes you feel like a man of God. So you turn on music and, and you, you listen to music and saints, let me shock you. The Holy Ghost don't be liking certain playlists. What happens if you drive in an Uber right now and somebody puts in on music that you actually don't like? It will affect your ride a little bit. Now, you can enjoy that somebody driving you and you get them to your destination. But in your mind, you're like, I'm ready to get out of here, I'm over here. And what if they turn up the volume on the music? 
How long with the moment? How long with Penitentiary with How do you want it? How do you need it? Big old, big old, big old, big old freak. And the music getting louder and louder and louder and louder. It turned up high, high, high. It blasted in the car. Saints, one time I had I had a, a, a biological, a, a natural family member according to the flesh. And I remember one time we had went over to the house. I was younger in years. And the boy had some big old eyes and some glasses. All right. But he was older in years. And he had entered into the world. And we, there was a mission. We was going just down the street. But he had a fast car, a stick shift. Saints, I'm going to tell you like this here. I was in India, and there was a midget driving the car. And we was going like 150 miles per hour, for real. This is this no lie. I'm, I'm not lying to you. Now, this man was a midget. His, his, his legs were short. That's what I mean. He was a midget. He was like three feet tall. And he had, a, he had a prop on the car. Now, I had got inside the car with another prop, and I looked over at him like, Nigga, do you know what's going on here? We about to die. That's, that's how I looked over. I looked over. Like, Nigga, do you know that we about to die in here? Am I seeing correctly what I'm seeing over here? This is a three, this is a three foot tall driver that we got right here. And since that man got, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what he hit to go that fast. <laughs> I don't know what he hit to go that fast. But since he hit something, yeah, since we're going 150 miles per hour, since my eyebrows was back like this here. Since it is like you just driving past people and it's just flashing your life flashing before you. And since you get to a point, you're trying to pitch your foot on the brakes, but you ain't got no brakes because you ain't got the wheel. And since the midget went left. Then the midget went right. Then the midget went he get and he was gone. And he just jicking the thing. Huh? Since my concern wasn't the speed so much. <laughs> my concern was I did not know if the midget was going to lose control because his legs were short. And if he made one bad move, what if his leg hopped up like this? It hopped up and then he couldn't regain balance because we was going too fast. What if he fell over? These were all things that I was looking at. So it wasn't so much the speed. I'm like, what if one moment he loses balance or something like that, and then he's trying to grab it back. And, and by the way, now since in India, how they drive, it is the worst. Oh, my gosh. Since in India, now since I, 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 might, I, I, might, I might be a little... Because there's, there's parts of Africa that the driving is crazy too. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. There's parts of Africa where the driving is crazy, crazy. But since back to the other one, the, the, the biological. So we's inside the car. I get inside the car. And my mother didn't want us Want, want me to go. My mother was like, no, 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 no. But the other, the other family member was like, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, just let him enjoy it just a little bit, you know. And my mother was like, no, 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 I don't want him to go in there. I don't, I don't want him to stay. And they were like, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, just relax, they'll be back in three minutes. 
Saints, this big old eye boy took us here, then there. I was in the back seat of that car. I went over, went back, flew up, flew back, flew forward, flew back. I was here in the front of the chair. He was stopping, dropping, rolling. It was like we was in a fire. It was like we was in the World Trade Center. He was drop. He put his foot on the gas. He stopped up. He went 150 around the block, turned around, did donuts, went around again. I'm in the back seat, twirling around all the way, all the way around. I couldn't stop. I did this nigga to like, kill me. I knew it was Satan inside the front seat. I was all over the place. I couldn't stop. Satan was driving the car trying to kill me. <laughs> this nigga Lucifer done got in front of the car trying to kill me. This was Lucifer in the front of the car. Lucifer the left, the left the wings guardian cherubim was now driving to a big eyed biological. I felt like Sherry Shepherd running with heels on. I couldn't stop. I was not couldn't stop. I was gone. All over the place. And says, I'm looking at him like. Nobody know you can't drive here. Saints, that's the worst thing that you could go do to somebody that can't drive. Give them a key. They be wildin'. You niggas be wildin'. Saints, I got outside the car. I was a little boy. I couldn't talk for about five hours. My mother was like, you want something to drink? You okay? I never drove in a car with that boy again. And since it was only supposed to be three, three, three minutes, we was driving for like over 13 minutes. It was hell. And then you know what the worst thing was? He played music so loud. You, you, have, you ever experienced this? The music so loud that your heartbeats start matching the music. Boom, 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 boom. Then your heart, you boom, 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 boom. Your heart going at the same rate. Saints, people be listening to music to get in the mood of all type of stuff. But I don't need the music. 